Okay, in the previous video, we saw how to create while loops and a do while loop. Now, if you notice, this is exactly the same program. I started with the same program because I want to take the same um, program and try to modify it and try to do it using for loops and add a couple of other things. Remember, this program will add the first n integers. Okay, so we read a value for n. And we essentially start at 1 and go till n. So, for example, we say n starts at 1 and we keep incrementing n by 1 until n gets to a certain, or we start at i, which is our counter, I should say. i will be 1 and we keep going until i hits n and we increment i by 1 every time. So, if you read the section on for loops, you notice that this is a very good example and a very good fit for for loops. So we're going to try and do that using for loops. Before we do that, I want to change a couple of other things. Now, here is um, the input for n. Now, remember, we talked about input failure. Here's a good example to check for input failure since we are working on loops. Remember, I said cn returns a 1 or a 0 based on whether it gets good input or bad input. So if cn gets good input, then it returns a 1. If it fails, then it returns a 0. So we could use that to check. So we say while not cn. Remember, not essentially says the reverse of what cn is. So if cn fails, not of cn would be true, and then it would come into the loop and do what we want to do. So when cn fails, it comes in here, and we're going to do a couple of things. Remember our clear, cn.clear. We're going to reset cn. We're going to do cn.ignore. We're going to ignore 100 characters or the new line character, whichever one comes first. So now our cn is all reset and everything from the buffer is cleared. Now it is time to tell the user invalid input. Please try again. So then we have to read the input again. Once the user is ready to input, we must read. So this statement here is very important. Otherwise, it's going to sit in an infinite loop because we are not reading and there's not it, it has already failed and it's going to keep checking the fail state. So read the input again and so it does this as long as the user has entered bad input as soon as the user enters good input cn would return a one not cn would be a zero and this loop will fail and it'll come out of there or the condition would fail and it'll come out of there and then here's our next condition this is okay we'll leave it at a while while n less than or equal to zero that means if n is now a negative number then we still want to tell them that that's not good so here is where we are going to change it to a for loop. So this is, I'm going to change this to a for loop. It's a very easy for loop. And notice when I change it to a for loop, we can change a couple of things. For i equals 1, we want i to start at 1, i less than or equal to n, i plus plus. We put all of those things in there. So now this i plus plus does not have to be there. Take that out, and we are essentially saying as long as i is less than or equal to n, come in here and add i to the total, increment i, check to see if i is less than or equal to n, and keep going in that loop as long as i is less than or equal to n. And then we come out and we essentially calculate the sum of the first n integers or we have already calculated, would be outputted, and then he asks the user if they want to repeat. So we have all the loops in here if you take a look at it. We have a do while loop, we have a while loop that checks for input failure, we have a while loop that checks to see if n is less than or equal to zero, and we have a for loop.